Good evening, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. Welcome to our Twilight Talks. Tonight we're in 2 Corinthians chapters 4 and 5, specifically chapter 4, verse 13, and chapter 5, verse 7. Tyler? And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. And 5, 7, for we walk by... What? Yeah. For we walk by faith, not by sight. All right. So what spirit of faith? Well, the spirit of faith that Christ had. We have the same spirit of faith. That is in accordance with the scripture. And he quotes from the psalm here. I believed, and so I've spoken. And he says, we also believe, and so also we speak. So the same Holy Spirit that was speaking through David by faith, the same Holy Spirit and the same faith that Jesus Christ had, that Je well, Jesus had to have faith, no, Jesus didn't have faith. Jesus had to have faith. All the time he was quoting scripture saying it was all about him. Um, let's see. If you believe what God says and you speak in agreement with what God says because you believe what God says, that would be called faith. faith. But some people have been taught that oh, we don't have that. No, no. You know why you don't have the faith of Jesus today? Because you've been taught that you don't have Jesus' faith. But I would argue that you can't have any faith, at least not godly faith, without having the same faith as Jesus. And the simple fact is, chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. He said, well, that's that's the end of the what it says in verse 6. Yeah, I know. So we're always confident, even though we know that while we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. But what? We know we're going there. We don't trust sight. We don't trust the difficulties of this world to set mm -hmm. our agenda. What do we trust, Tyler? God. God. And specifically, what of God do we trust? His word. His word. And so if we trust his word, we would speak what his word says because that's what we believe. If you want to find out what you believe, pay attention to what you speak. To the best of my knowledge, Tyler and I have never had a conversation that says, you know, I'm so glad to be in the church, but man, I sure do love Satan a lot. I don't think we've ever had that conversation. That one I can guarantee you we have not. Someone, oh, I can't believe you just said that. Yeah, I use something that extreme. But how many times do you read the scripture and you go, well, God would do that for people back then, but that's just not for us. Why? You just spoke what was what? In the heart of your belief, in the core of who you are. So guess what? You know why you can't see God's mighty works more? Because you believe God doesn't want to do mighty works in your day and time. And uh, oddly enough, tomorrow night, um, brother... Uh, yeah, Brother Greg Edwards will be finishing up uh, his part of the series on Psalms on Wednesday night. And in the 106th Psalm, it's going to make the point that because they chose not to believe his promise, that was why they were destroyed. They chose not to believe his word. They said, no, that's not for us. And guess what? It ended up not being for them. And someone, God could have given it to him anyways. No, he couldn't have. This, I believe, therefore I've spoken. When the ten spies, came, when the twelve spies came back, two of them wanted to give a good report. Ten of them gave an evil report. That's what the scripture calls it, an mm -hmm. evil report. What did the people say they could do in reference to taking the land of Canaan in agreement with God's promise? Because God led us, we can take it. Because God said we would. No, no, no. Not not Joshua and Caleb. I thought he said the ones that said in accordance with God. The other one said? Yeah, what oh. did the what did the crowd say in reference to what God said about their ability to take the land of Canaan? Is that when they said you're taking us out of the land of Egypt to be squished by the people who live here? Pretty much. And they said, it's it. We cannot do it. We cannot take this land. Now, I want you to think about something. 
when you read about how those battles were won, you realize that only a people who had faith that God would give them victory could win fights the way they won those fights in the book of Joshua. The battle of Jericho, right out of the gate. By faith, those people marched around that city once a day for six days. And on the seventh day, they marched around it seven times. And then they blew trumpets. And then the walls fell inward. And the children of Israel were able to go up over the wall and have the high ground right out of the gate. You do understand, from a standpoint of military tactics, marching in a circle and blowing a trumpet and saying, this is the key to our victory. We'll walk in circles around it and we'll blow trumpets on, on the seventh day. And that's how we'll win. You do understand if any of our generals would have said going into Iraq, gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to drive our vehicles and we're going to march our platoons in a circle once a day. Then on the seventh day, we'll make seven circles around it and then we'll blow a bunch of trumpets. And that's how we're going to achieve victory. What would what would what would the president do if a general that was his his, his plan? Depends on who the president is. Okay. But most presidents would be like, "You're out of your mind, and I need a new general." And I need a new general. Can you imagine, for the Battle of Iwo Jima, if they would have said, "We'll just drive our ships around, uh, around that island, and then we'll blow a bunch of trumpets from a long ways away." And the Japanese won't be able to fight back and there won't be a single Marine lost in taking Iwo Jima. That's our tactic. You see, that's why I say God could not give them the land the moment that they said, it's impossible for us to take the land. And then when God said, don't go up, you're going to die out here been saying you're going to die out here you haven't trusted me on anything even though I've brought you through all kinds of stuff that defies explanation and then when God said I'm not going to be with you now the moment God said I'm not going to be with you the people said oh we made a mistake we'll go up tomorrow and we'll conquer everything because without God we can do it all and Moses begged them. He said, please don't go up. And what did they do, Tyler? They went. And? They lost. They lost, and they lost bad. Mm -hmm. As you believe, therefore you speak. So when you're reading stuff in the Word of God, be careful that you don't go, well, that was for a different time. That was only for them. Because you realize that that means that from a standpoint of faith, everything you just read none of it can ever come into play in your life as long as you're speaking and believing those things. And when people say, how come, how come we don't see the same kind of great works of God in the church today that we saw in, in the book of Acts? Because most church people have been taught that was only for those people back then and it's not for us now. And if that's what you believe and if that's what you speak, then guess what? That's what you can receive by faith, which is nothing. If you believe by faith for nothing, you can receive by faith nothing. Some other thoughts on this, my brother? No, sir. Sure you don't want to talk about walk by faith, not by sight? Or something? This is your chance. No, I can think of. All right, then. With that, we bid you good night.